a very powerful feature in Sibelius and a very useful feature in Sibelius is one that you'll probably never use, but you have to be aware of its existence and what it's doing in the background. And it's a feature called Magnetic Layout. What Magnetic Layout will do is to work away in the background and make sure that every object that you put into your score tries its best not to clash with other objects. It basically tries to make your score look as right as it possibly can, as correct as it possibly can, without any input from you at all. You just put the notes in and let Sibelius and Magnetic Layout deal with the layout of it. Let me give you a couple of examples. I'm looking here at a hymn tune called Camberwell, and I'm going to put some lyrics in these first two, these two bars here. So I would do that in the usual way, Control L for lyrics, and lyrics for this point are at the name, well now you see things moving around, that's because of the lyrics, because Zubelius is making sure that the lyrics all stay underneath the notes, so that's fine. We've covered that already in another video. And when I, when I escape it, you can see this dotted line appears. That is magnetic layout saying that these lyrics here are all going to stay in a straight line so that it, they're easy to read for the singers. Escape again. Well, that's quite nice. What happens though if I decide to take a note and let's say move it down? Well, the, the lyrics move with it and they stay in a straight line. And that's magnetic layout at work. If I move this note for, further down, see that the word at has now gone red. That's magnetic layout saying if I move this down any further, it's going to clash with the stave below. So, what I could do is move the stave down and it now can move further down. And again, I can move the note even further down now, and the lyrics will all stay in a straight line. That's basically how magnetic layout works. Let me give you another couple of examples over here. In the next couple of bars, I'm going to use some dynamics. So again, I'll put them in in the usual way. So let's put a piano mark there. Let's put a 40 mark there. And I'm going to create a hairpin crescendo in there. See again this dotted line? Magnetic layout. They're going to stay in a straight line again so they're easy to read. And the same rules apply if I move these up or down, those will move with it. But there's another wee feature in when you're using dynamics. Let me show you this. If I want to take this note here and add another dynamic to it, let's say a mezzo 40, watch what happens. I'm going to do this the longer way just so you can see completely what's happening. So Control E will get me in there. I'm going to right click here and select mezzo and it sits in front of the hairpin and my 40. And that's the way it looks at the moment. But as soon as I hit escape to finish putting it in, it moves in front of the hairpin. Again, that is an awful lot easier to read than it was previously. That's magnetic layout, again, doing its thing, just working away in the background, leaving you to concentrate on putting your notes in. Of course, you have, you have complete control over it, and it's all controlled from the layout tab. You can see up here there's a magnetic layout group, and it's turned on by default. If I turn it off, that happens, so you, your now dynamics are now clashing with each other. And again, if I was to go back to what I was doing before with this, you can see the note now covers the text. So that's why magnetic layout is turned on by default, because it makes sense to do so. There may be a time, however, when you want to have control over an individual part of it. Let's say, for example, this 40 mark here. What you would do is you can select it, and then in the object, by the, the default one is what is set up here, whether it's on or off, but you can turn it on or off on an individual object basis. So if I decide for some reason I want that to be up there, then I can do that, just by taking that one there and moving on and off. If I put it back on, it moves back to somewhere sensible. Notice, however, there's a grey 
ghost version of it. That's where I put it, and it's now been moved to somewhere other than that by a magnetic layout. There is another feature in Sibelius that you will use quite often in conjunction with magnetic layout. Let me show you it here. I'm going to have a look at the first line of the flute part here. Let's go zoom in a wee bit. And let's add some dynamics. So I'll put a 40 mark there. Let's see a piano mark there. And let's have a two bar diminuendo. Well, that's fine. I'm now going to use the multi copy feature so I can select those, filter out the dynamics, copy them. I'm going to add them to the rest of the staves at that point. There we go. Now, immediately you'll notice a problem. Quite a few of the diminuendo marks have turned red. Basically, that's magnetically out, throwing its hands up and saying, I can't fix this. There's too much information there. That note there is too high and that one there is too low. I can't not clash there. Something has to be done. Now, what I could do is go through each of these automatically, or sorry, individually, and adjust them. But imagine doing that for an entire score. That would take forever. And that's not what Sibelius is about. So there's a, an easier way. Of course there's this. Let me have a look at this. I'm going to select... Just those bars. I could select everything, of course. In fact, let's just do that. I'm going to select all. Control A. So the, the now the entire score has been selected. On the layout tab, there's a button that says optimize. And what optimize is, is a universal fix all. It will try and make everything move around so that clashes don't happen. And it'll do it for the entire score. Now, there isn't an awful lot of other dynamics in here, but this will let you see how it works. So I'll click op Optimize. See things moving? And now, when you look down, we've been quite lucky here. There are no red diminuendos anymore because the Optimize has fixed them all automatically. There may still have been, if, I was, if there was a lot of dynamics and a lot of notes basically in the score there may be the odd clash later on but that will usually fix the majority of them just a little tweaking maybe later it might be required so that's magnetic layout it's a very useful feature particularly if you use it in conjunction with the optimized staves and it lets you ignore anything to do with layout in general you can concentrate completely on the notes that you want to put into your score.